What's going on, ladies? Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is that you're watching me. And welcome to this week's live masterclass. As you can see over here, it's opposite for me. As you can see over here, the topic, the name of this week's masterclass is the carb regulation protocol, or sometimes you might have seen me refer to this as the CRP. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to do a quick tech check and make sure that everything is working as it should be. If you can see me, if you can hear me, comment hello down below. It looks like everything is working as it should be. There we go. There's a video of me watching me. Fantastic. Cool. All right, so throughout, you're going to see me refer to my phone quite a bit so that I can see who's commenting and things like that. You're also going to see me refer to some notes just to make sure that, you know, I'm not missing anything. Dead simple. And, you know, of course, I'm going to be having a few sips of, uh, of coffee. Now, if you're looking at this mug and thinking, blimey, Chris, that must have cost you thousands of dollars because... You know, it looks like it's been done by, you know, a very famous artist. Then, unfortunately, you're wrong. This was done by me. Right? Recently, it was my girlfriend's birthday and she wanted to do some pottery painting. And, yeah, I can appreciate that in reality, it looks like a kindergarten has done it. But <laughs> I'm not very good when it comes to, uh, you know, being creative and painting things. Very good coach, but not very good at painting things, as you can see. But... Anyway, we're on. Uh, we're diverging already. Um, I can see a few people are already here and watching. All right. Good morning. I can see we've got um, Amanda and we've got a few others watching too. So, um, first of all, who is this for? Right. Who is this for? So, first of all, if you're someone who is, you know, tired of feeling tired, if you're sick of feeling sick, if you're you know, battling with, you know, health complications related to type 2 diabetes. If your lack of energy means that you're missing out on things that you would otherwise love to do, you know, if your body confidence, self-esteem, self-image is at an all-time low, then this is for you, okay? If any of that resonates with you whatsoever, if you're like, yeah, you know, it sounds like me, comment a one down below, okay? This is also for you, if you're someone who's, you know, wanting to lose 20 to 100 pounds plus, if you're wanting to lower your A1C and achieve remission and remove type 2 diabetes as an active diagnosis, this is for you if, you know, you're wanting to fit into clothes that you haven't worn in 20 years plus. This is for you if you want the energy to keep up with your kids and grandkids. And if you're wanting to, you know, avoid or the health complications related to type 2 diabetes, right? And if that sounds like you, if all of those things resonate with you, if you're like, yeah, those are all things that I want to achieve, comment a two down below so I can see who's here and, you know, why you're here and whether, you know, this is this is for you, all right? This is for the people who want to regulate their life, right? This isn't just about regulating your carbohydrates and, a, you know, achieving a lower A1C. This is about all of the things that come as a result of that. You know, being able to partake in your favorite hobbies, being able to travel and do all the things that right now you feel like you maybe can't do or can't do to the, you know, level that you would really love to do it. All right. So right now, if you are watching me live, you know, comment live down below. If you're watching me on the replay, I know it's quite early, um, you know, over in America. So, you know, if you're if you're watching me on the replay, I know that out of the, you know, 6,600 of you in this group now, most of you will be watching this on the replay. So if you are watching on the replay, comment replay, or if you're here live with me right now, comment live down below too, okay? Comment live down below. Awesome. All right. I can see that we've got Donna with us, Kareen with us, Susan, Donna, and Naomi. Fantastic. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. So, first of all, what is the CRP? What is the carb regulation protocol? So, in a nutshell, it's learning how you're able to eat all of your favorite 
normal foods, still lose weight, still lower your A1C and still achieve remission like the ladies that we coach inside of the diabetic inner circle. Okay, now you're probably thinking, Chris, you know, I can't do those things, right? So let me show you a few examples. Right now we're working with just over 30 ladies, right? I'm only one person when it comes to doing the actual coaching and it's, you know, based, it's, it's mostly one-to-one, -one, which means that we've only got limited time, right? So we only help around 30 to 40 ladies at a time, right? So I'm just going to show you three out of the 30. Okay, we've got Casey. She's lowered her A1C from 10.3 down to 6.0. She's achieved Wonderland, achieved a weight below 199.9 pounds and lost 30 pounds in total and over nine inches. And now let's let's show you a few kind of examples of some of the things that Casey has been eating. They're going to be a bit blurry, unfortunately. I couldn't I couldn't make them clearer, but she's had. She's been eating at Wendy's, right? One meal here. She had a double sub, which is a burger. She had nuggets. She had a small chocolate frosty. And she also had fries. Yet she still achieved these things, right? She's had Dunkin' Donuts. Yet she's still achieved these things, right? She's had Taco Bell. Taco. She's had quesadillas. She's been out. She's gone out to eat. She's eaten the food that she really enjoys. And she's still achieved these things, right? Then we've got Michelle. She lowered her A1C from, um, oh, I can't remember what it was now, but down to 4.8, right? I can't remember where we started, but she's lowered it down to 4.8. She's lost 20 pounds within, you know, the first 10 weeks. She's over 10 and a half inches lost across those 10 weeks. She is off blood pressure medication and she is off all of her medication, type 2 diabetes medication, apart from the Mount Jaro, okay? She's off metformin and she's off Farsiga. And Michelle has also eaten at Taco Bell. She's had tacos. She's eaten Papa John's pepperoni pizza. She's also been to Arby's and she's had roast beef sliders and a McDonald's chocolate shake, right? She's eaten a, bar a Burger King. She's had a Whopper with cheese. She's eaten onion rings, yet she's still achieved these things, right? Nikki, she only started with us in the last three, four weeks, right? She's already over 10 pounds lost. Her A1C was recently down to 5.2 and blood sugars are continuing to trend downwards, right? Now, you know, in the time that we've been working together, right, we've only been working together for a month. Some of these A1C reductions were, you know, achieved before working with us, but you know, this has still been achieved in the time frame also that we've been working together. And she's been eating these things. She's had Red Baron pizza, right? She's eaten Jack in the box. She's eaten Popeyes, you know, a biscuit, mashed potatoes and chicken tenders. She's eaten at Five Guys, so the bacon cheeseburger and fries, right? These ladies have all been eating their normal favorite food, yet they have still been achieving fat loss. They have still lowered their A1C and they have still achieved remission, right? We've got ladies that are watching us right now who still work with us, like Naomi, who has achieved remission whilst eating the food that she enjoys, right? So for all you ladies saying that this isn't possible, there's quite literally proof here that you can eat your normal favorite food, still lose weight, still lower your A1C, and eventually achieve remission. Have these ladies been perfect? Heck no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I have not been perfect. But we're never looking to be perfect. We're just looking to be better over time. And again, these ladies have achieved these fantastic, these fantastic goals this weight loss and lower A1C whilst eating the food that they enjoy, right? Cool. And we do this, first of all, by making an allowance for these foods, right, elsewhere in your diet, okay? Making an allowance for the foods that you really enjoy elsewhere in your diet, right? So, obviously, moderation is needed. OK, moderation is needed, which we'll we'll get to that shortly. OK, but individual foods and individual meals are irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. OK, what I mean by that is individual foods and individual meals do not dictate your diet. 
Okay, let me say that again. Individual foods and individual meals do not dictate your diet. Instead, entire days do and weeks do. And I want you to really look at that is we manage food inside of the carb regulation protocol, not individually, but instead across a whole day, several days, and even sometimes across the entire week, right? So these foods that we've just been showing, you know, they're eating out the takeout, you know, the, we didn't show you alcohol today, but, you know, Casey of one of the three examples has been drinking alcohol, you know, somewhat regularly. She's been going out with friends and enjoying that social life, right? But those things in isolation on their own, unless they're happening all day, every day, don't matter. You can make an allowance for these things that you enjoy elsewhere in your diet, elsewhere in the day, elsewhere in the following days, elsewhere in the entire in the, in the entirety of that week. Right? We don't want to promote, you know, binge and restrict cycles. That's not what we do. It's just learning how to manage these foods. That's all it is. Making an allowance for these foods elsewhere in your diet. Does that make sense? <laughs> does that make sense? If it does, comment a three down below, okay? It sounds incredibly technical and complex, but it's not. It's actually incredibly simple and easy, okay? Now, what we need to remember is there are two main objectives when we start, you know, discussing, um, you know, diet, the things that you want to achieve within your diet, right? We've got calories and we've got carbs, okay? Those are two of the most important things in regards to what you want to be paying attention to within your diet, calories and carbs, okay? It doesn't matter what diet you follow, keto, paleo, Weight Watchers, it doesn't matter. Calories dictate fat loss. Whether you count calories or not, calories still count. Okay, I want you to remember that. Calories dictate fat loss. It doesn't matter what diet you follow, Octavia, doesn't matter. If you are not consuming fewer calories than what your body ex expends, you will not elicit fat loss. It doesn't matter whether you count calories or not. Calories still count. Really is that simple, okay? Really is that simple. And Naomi, the lady who we currently work with, it's very possible it's mindset mostly. And yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we'll be we'll be getting to that shortly, right? We'll be getting to that shortly. So um, if, with all of that in mind, if a meal or food is high in either calories or carbs, then we simply make allowances elsewhere, all right? Obviously, you can't eat Five Guys, McDonald's, and Taco Bell all day, every day. That's not possible. That's not what we're saying. But you can eat these things several times a week. You know, these high-calorie, slightly higher-carb foods, as long as you make an allowance for them elsewhere in your days, in your weeks, right? Cool. All right. We've got lots of threes. It makes sense. Good, good. And obviously, you know, it doesn't matter what food sits within that. The food that does sit within it is entirely up to you, right? I never tell anyone what to eat. I coach people. I show them how they can eat the food that they want to eat. Really, is that simple, okay? All of the ladies that we coach, most of them eat their, their own personal preference of foods and meals. And whether it's, you know, what I've shown you today is three extreme examples. You might be looking at it and be like, but I don't want to eat takeout. That's fine. You might not want to eat takeout. But what about, you know, eating the same meal as the rest of the family at dinner time? Right? Who on earth wants to prepare a different meal to the rest of the family? That sucks. That's not sustainable. That's not enjoyable. Using the CRP, the carb regulation protocol, you can eat the same foods as everyone else is eating at dinner time, right? Even if it's slightly higher calorie, higher carb foods, as long as we make an allowance for it elsewhere in our diet, okay? 
or going out for fret with, with friends or family for meals, you know, to restaurants or celebrating birthdays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Valentine's Day. <laughs> OK, anniversaries. This applies to pretty much anything and it is entirely moldable to whatever you need it to be. Because there are no rigid rules. There are no rules, rigid rules. As long as you, again, learn how to manage these foods. Okay? Cool. All right. So we said that, obviously, this does come down to, um, to moderation. Right? So, first of all, we want to be able to, you know, make an allowance for them elsewhere in your diet, which I know I sound like a broken record, but that's what we're learning to do throughout this process. Right? Next of all, we want to be able to learn how to be able to consume the food you love in a controlled way without overeating. Okay, so I'm sure, you know, many of you have had, you know, a history of not being able to eat certain foods in moderation. And why? Why does that happen? Why can't you eat those foods in moderation? So this is something that we delve deep into within the CRP in order to change, you know, these patterns of behavior so that you can enjoy the food you love without binging. And, you know, again, this is individual to the person, right? You know, that binging, that overconsumption could be a bunch of different things. It could be over restriction, right? If you're restricting yourself from eating something, I'm not allowed it, what do you think is going to happen next time you see it or eat it? You're probably not going to have one. You're probably going to have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or the whole box. Over restriction very often leads to overconsumption. Okay. Poor management of appetite. If you're skipping meals and then getting over hungry, you're probably going to, you're probably going to binge. You're probably going to overconsume. Right. So poor management of appetite, skipping meals, lack of protein, um, you know, lack of calories. Um, poor sleep, even lack of sleep leads to an increase in your hunger hormone called ghrelin, which leads to a higher appetite. If you've got a higher appetite, guess what? You're more likely to binge, overconsume, uh, experience cravings, want to snack more. Um, what else could impact binging, stress, and emotion? Right? It's different for everyone in some capacity. Therefore, the solution is going to be slightly different, right? But just because you can't eat that food in moderation doesn't mean that you will never be able to eat that food. There's going to be a reason why, like one of these things we just mentioned or any other of the other 10. Right. If There's a reason. There's a solution. Right. And if there's a solution, there's a fix. So it's again, it's not just learning how to make an allowance for these foods. It's learning how to be able to eat these foods in a controlled way without overeating. Now, before we say, but Chris. You know, I can't eat these foods that you've been showing me and lose weight and lower your A1C and lower your A1C and achieve remission, right? Well, why didn't you say that to you know Casey, Nikki, and Michelle and the other 30 ladies that we work with, right? You can eat these foods. You can. You just don't know how to manage these foods yet. And before you say, but Chris, <laughs> I can't eat those foods in moderation, you can. Maybe you just need a little bit of help learning how to, okay? Does that make sense, ladies? If it does, comment a big four, right? Comment a big four. So to summarize, what is the carb regulation protocol? It's two things. It's learning how to manage these foods and make an allowance for these foods elsewhere in your diet. But it's also about learning how to consume these foods in a controlled way without overeating. That's what the carb regulation protocol is. Those two things. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Lots of fours. Fantastic. Let me just catch up on the uh, on the comments quickly whilst I draw, have a sip of coffee out of my dodgy mug. Amanda, four. Yes, it does. And yes, you can. Awesome. Donna, four. Kareen, four. Nice. Awesome. All right, cool. So now that you know what the CRP is, why, why am I even talking about this? Why does it matter? Why is it relevant? Why should you care? Right? So why do we coach, 
you know, the, the CRP inside of the diabetes inner circle. And why should you adopt this too? Okay, dead simple. Why should you adopt these same principles? Why should you try and, you know, again, learn more about the CRP? So the easy answer is sustainability, right? Listen, every diet under the sun is built upon a set of rules. You can eat this. You can't eat that, right? The foods that you can't eat, well, those are some of your normal favorite foods, whether it be eating out, takeout, out with friends, alcohol with friends, family, eating meals at dinner time with the rest of the family, whatever. You're not allowed to eat that anymore, right? Well, that doesn't sound very sustainable. If it's going to take you six, nine, 12 months for you to reach your goal, are you going to be able to stick to it that long without any of those things? Of course you're not. If you could, you would have already done it. And that's not because there's something wrong with you. That's why you couldn't do it. It's because the approach itself was unsustainable and, and it sucked. It really is that simple, right? After a week, you feel miserable. After two weeks, you crack. After three weeks, you binge and you just repeat this cycle that happens because you are being too restrictive, right? However, with the CRP, you can still enjoy those foods. There is no elimination, right? Which means you can actually stick to it long enough to actually achieve the end goal rather than crash and burn three weeks down the road, right? Who agrees that conventional diets are unsustainable, right? If you're thinking, yeah, of course, it's based on my experience. Conventional diets are unsustainable. Comment of five if you're like, yeah, I agree, right? Now, let's say, let's say you're part of the 1% that does stick to keto or paleo or any other diet. Right? I'm picking on keto, and it's just the first one that comes to mind, right? Nutrisystem, Octavia, whatever. Let's say, you're part of the 1% that does stick to that and does get the results. So you're at your goal weight, your type 2 diabetes is in remission, you're happy, right? Fantastic. So this is the diet. You get the diet and you throw it in the bin. Metaphorically speaking, you're not going to eat that way forever. Why on earth would you? You know, you're not going to eat Nutrisystem forever. You're not going to be on Octavia forever. I, first of all, why on earth would you plus the cost and all those other things right so you throw it in the bin that's great how do you eat now how do you eat now what did you actually learn that you can apply to everyday life other than just following those strict rules that you are no longer going to follow because why on earth would you well what happens is you return back to what you do know and what you do know gets you back to where you were. So over the next six months, nine months, two years, three, four, five years, you regain all of the weight that you once lost. Because it wasn't something that you could do forever. It wasn't something that was applicable to the rest of your life. However, if you can lose weight, lower your A1C and achieve remission whilst eating your normal favorite foods and learning how to manage those foods, as well as eat them in moderation, then imagine how easy it is to maintain the goals, the results that you achieve by doing exactly the same thing. Nothing changes. And it's a lot easier to maintain your body weight than it is to lose body weight, right? Maintaining requires you to eat more. So once you're at your goal weight, you're like, great, fantastic. I've got here by you know following a lifestyle change, eating my favorite normal foods. Fantastic. Now, all I do to maintain it is keep doing exactly what I've been doing, but eat more. <laughs> that's pretty darn easy, right? So that's why this is what we coach. It is the path of least resistance. It's enjoyable. It's sustainable. It's something you can actually stick to. But also, it isn't just about getting to the result. It's about keeping the result. Right. Once you're there, you're able to maintain 
staying there whilst using the same set of skills and knowledge because you're just doing the same thing but eating more. Now, tell me if I'm wrong, but that's a pretty easy transition to make. <laughs> that is a pretty easy transition to make. All right. Cool. Now, obviously, this is all about, you know, managing, again, the food and the practical sense of that, as well as some mindset things, you know, around how to eat it in moderation. Right. But, you know, there's some other things that supplement that, too. So what you need to bear in mind also is that you can't. What's the phrase? Right. The phrase is you can't change. You can't separate the brain from the body. Right, you can't separate the brain from the body, they are the same thing. Your body right now is a symptom of what happens above your shoulders, your mind, your brain. Your body is a symptom of what happens above your shoulders. You know, you can try to change your body, yeah. You can try to achieve weight loss, you can try to lower your A1C, but if the same beliefs, if the same self-talk and intrinsic values persist eventually you're going to wind up making you know the same choices right and every choice you make has an outcome that outcome is where you are right now okay does that make sense so if we reverse engineer this all the way back to the source then you are where you are because of the, your beliefs that you hold, your habits, the self-talk, and the values that you kind of live by, right? Your lifestyle, habits, and beliefs. So those are the things that actually do also need some attention. So otherwise, you're going to make the same choices because these things dictate every choice you make. And if you make the same choices, every choice has an outcome, and the outcome is going to be where you are right now, all right? Does that make sense, ladies? Comment a big six down below if that makes sense. Comment a big six. So to summarise, again, everything we've just been through, right? I'll try and keep this below 30 minutes just to respect your ladies' times, right? But what is the carb regulation protocol, right? It's learning how you can eat your normal favourite food, still lose weight, still lower your A1C and still achieve remission by managing these foods elsewhere in your diet, just like Nikki, right? just like um, Casey and just like Michelle did, right? Not only that, it's about learning how to be able to eat these foods in a controlled manner without binging and over-consuming them every time you eat them. That's what the carb regulation protocol is. The reason why this is important, the reason why I'm even sat here talking to you about this is because it's something which is actually sustainable. It's something that you can actually stick to. It means that it's something that you can actually follow in order to actually achieve your goal weight, actually lower your A1C and actually achieve remission, but not only just achieve those things, but maintain them too once you've actually got them, right? Because that's part of the problem is, yes, most conventional diets are too restrictive, but some people do chew it, do, do achieve their results. You know, the 1% of people that do achieve the results, their goals, what happens is, you know, 80% of those regain it, right? <coughs> Sorry, pardon me, because the approach that they used was not sustainable long term. So they return back to what they know and what they know gets them back to where they were. Right. That's the unfortunate truth. Right. OK. I hope you found this helpful, ladies. If it has, if it has been helpful, comment helpful down below. If you ladies have got any questions, you know, please do comment those questions down below. Right. If any of you ladies would like some extra support, if you'd like to sit down one day, you know, with me, right, have a coffee with me and my dod dodgy mug and just have a five to ten minute chat one day, you know, comment coaching down below. We can find a time that suits both of us. Again, we can just sit down, go through the things that you're currently struggling with. Um, you can ask me any questions that you've got, right? Again, five to ten minutes, sit down, have a chat, me and my dodgy mug. <laughs> right? Cool. We've got lots of comments coming in. Let me pull up my, my phone. All right. Cool. 
Kareen, very helpful. Cheryl, very helpful. Cool. And again, you ladies that are watching on the replay, you know, I expect that too. If you if you did find this helpful, comment helpful. If there's any questions, if you're confused, comment those down below too. All right. Cool. And again, if you would like to again sit down, have a quick chat, comment coaching down below, and we'll find the time that that does that does suit. All right. Awesome. We haven't had any questions. So what we're going to do, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I hope you ladies have a fantastic week, a fantastic day, right? Whatever day it is that you're watching me. And you know that I'll be speaking to you all very, very soon anyway. If you need me for anything, you know exactly where I am. I'm right here. Shoot me a message. And listen, I'll be speaking to you soon. Au revoir. Au revoir.